in the last class we have this we were discussing so in the last class we were discussing about the gauss seidel method for the load flow analysis now there is another topic that is your newton repson which is also another method utilized for finding the load flow or the power flow in the system so basically in this newton repson what we do we represent our system our equations with a function of a taylor series okay now this f is f is a function of x which has been represented by this taylor series now in this basically we neglect the higher order terms and we take only the first order derivative and the principal component okay and write the deviation of x from this x v okay the current gauss after this what we will be doing we will be doing the approximate we will be approximating as i told you by neglecting the higher order terms only the first principal component and the first order derivative will be the part of it then now then we will equate it equal to zero to linearize this that is the linear approximation will be done and we will solve this deviation then we will solve this deviation for the system okay and after this we will estimate the new solution by once we have find out this deviation once we have find out this deviation we will find out these two okay let's take an example we are having one function f of x square minus 2 and the newton repson to solve this fx is equal to 0 the iterative update is given to you that is for the first iteration if we calculate the deviation with the given formula which has been shown to you let it be question number 1 and then after this we will find out this delta xv Okay, we substituted this x. What is the d d f x? D f by d x. It will be two x. Okay, the first derivative of this one. So when we substitute this d f of d x, it is coming to be one by two of x v. It will become the first one x v. Okay, and what is your x? This is your x square minus two, and we take the inverse of it. That's why it will it is coming to be downward. It is coming to be this way. Is this clear? We are taking the inverse of it. So what is the inverse of it? It will be one upon two x. So we sub when we substitute this, we will be getting. is df of dx okay for the function of x now when we now we will update we will find out the new solution for the next iteration that is here equal to the v plus 1 so this is the previous one plus the deviation so the previous one was what the xv plus of delta x of v so when we substitute this value of delta xv Which we have just calculated. When we substitute this value over here, we will be getting this equation. Let it be equation number two. After this, we will write. A, we have just calculated the various values of x, f of f of x v, and deviations by using this MATLAB code. We have written the MATLAB code, and we have done. We have gone through the various iterative way. then when we do this we will be finding out that for the first iteration was a zero iteration we are getting the xv 
x is equal to 1, f of x is equal to minus 1, and deviation is of 0.5. Okay, we are guessing this. This is an initial guess. This is an initial guess which we do. Okay, then after this, for the first iteration, when we calculate it, it will coming to be the updated value. This is what x of b plus 1. Okay, this is your updated value. And after this, this is your x of f of x p. Okay. And after this, you will be calculating this value. Okay. okay. Then the deviation is coming to be minus 0 0.08 triple 3. This is your delta x. This is your delta x. Now, in the second iteration, this is for the first iteration. This is the second iteration. The value has reduced, and we have we have, we have reached to the better value of 1.41667 by finding the function value as this and the deviation value as this. Okay, and in the third iteration, it is again reduced. Okay, and the with the function value of this and we are not getting any deviation value why we are not getting value deviation value because it has crossed already crossed the this tolerance limit it is already crossed this tolerance limit so once the system once once the iteration value it, while the iterations this deviation crosses the it, tolerance value which which has been set by the user which has been set by the user in the codes so for an example, we are having it, we are taking it as 0.3. Okay, 10 to the power minus 3, or in MATLAB, we write it like this e to the power e 3e minus 3. Okay, this is your tolerance limit epsilon. Okay. Now look at this. This is what we are looking for. This is the graph of function f of this is the function f of x is equal to x square minus 2. When we plot this x square minus 2, we are getting this value, this type of graph, this type of plot. And the solutions to f of x is equal to 0 are the points where the f of x intersects the x axis. Therefore, when we substitute when this f of x is coming to be 0. It is coming to be 0 when your x square is equal to coming to be 2. When your x square is coming to be 2. That means when your x square is coming to be 2, then it will become minus 2 minus 2. It will become 0. And which is the point at x is equal to x square is equal to 2? It is somewhat over here. It is a somewhat over here. That is, it is nothing but root 2. It is your root 2. Okay. 1.414. It is clear. So, this is the point where your FFX is coming to 0. Similarly, at this location, this is your minus, minus 1.414. Now, what does the link, uh, this sequential linear approximation in Newton Rathen method does? Look at this. We have started from this point over here, somewhat, somewhat over here. We started our linear approximation somewhat over here. Then after this, we do the linear approximation. We do the ten. We create, make a tangent from this side, and it touches the x-axis over here. Then again from this point, we have started the least nearest possible value on the fun on the function. Nearest possible value on the function is this one. Then again from this point we started our value. So this is the point where the new updated value. This is nothing but your x of b plus one point. Okay. And this is your x naught. X of b zero. That is the initial guess. You have started guessing from this location. And then this is the new value of x of b plus one. Okay. Then we again start the linear uh, linear approximation. I'm just making it for more zoom so that you can be able to 
is it or an example this for the function okay so we do the linear approximation over it then we again do the linear approximation from this side then again we reach at this level and then again to this and again and this and this so this is the value at which we will be getting the least near nearest approximate value to determine the next value of x is this clear i think this is the way this is a way in which the linear approximation has been done which is being used by the newton repson method so when the when close to the solution the error decreases quite quickly in this case whereas the error were not decreasing quite quickly in the gauss seidel method we have to introduce the acceleration acceleration parameter to make the convergence more faster okay so therefore that's why it is called as a quadratic convergence it is also called as a quadratic convergence now the number of correct significant figures roughly doubles at each iteration now we know that this f of xv is known as a mismatch which we have which we would like to derive to zero this mismatch has to be reduced to the zero okay so what is the stopping criteria when the absolute value of this function is less than the is less than the is the tolerance limit less than the tolerance limit this is your tolerance limit okay so i have set this as e to the power sorry 3e minus 3 or 10 to the power minus 3 so when the value reaches below this tolerance value okay below this tolerance value then your stopping criteria will satisfied and your iteration will be stopped okay. this stopping criteria can be decided by the tolerance limit which can be decided by the user it is always not necessary that the function will itself you know the user will define the stopping criteria and minimum should be the minimum value for this okay so in this what are the comments the results are dependent upon what it is depending on the initial guess that what is the initial guess what if we have guessed the x of 0 is equal to 0 or x of 0 is equal to minus 1 okay look at this look at this graph again for an example we are taking the this as the initial guess okay or we are taking the this in the minus 1 for an example f of x is equal to minus 1 over here so for an example this is your minus 1 okay then what will be the value okay so you have to identify the value so the solution of the region of attraction is the set of initial gas that converges to the particular solution the roa region of attraction is often hard to determine in this case okay so what's the solution we easily calculate the multi variable newton repson now the multi variable newton repson we have to generalize the case where x is a n dimensional vector and fx is an n dimensional vector function in the previous example we have considered the x as a scalar quantity but what if we are having the function fx or x as an n dimensional vector function so now what is the solution we will again seek a solution for f of x is equal to 0 that is this f of x must reach to 0 in this case okay on near to towards the 0 tends to 0 so in this we know that the taylor series expansion is written for this multi variable function as f of x x1 is equal to x plus del x is equal to f1 x Plus del f one upon del x one into del 
delta x1 plus del f1 upon del x2 into delta x2 and so on and till the higher order terms till the uh, x till the nth order sorry till the nth term and then to the higher order terms okay so if you write it for the n values for the n vectors i will be writing like this i will be writing in this way okay therefore f of n x plus del f1 f of x1 into delta x1 plus del f n upon del x2 into delta x2 plus so on till del f n upon del x n plus delta x n or the higher order term. So in this way you will be representing your complete n dimensional function with the n dimensional x value in the Taylor series expansion. This can be written more complicated compactly in the matrix form. So if I can write it that f of x plus x del x delta x is equal to f of f f one x f two x and f one x plus of the matrix. This is the matrix, okay, of Taylor series into delta x one, delta x two, until delta x n. Okay, and the higher order terms. So this n cross n matrix of partial derivative is known as a Jacobian matrix. This is the Jacobian matrix and denoted by Jx. Now, what is the multivariable not mutual reduction procedure? How to solve these solutions in this? With the use of Jacobian matrix, we solve this multivariable Newton reduction method. So derivation of Newton reduction method is similar to the scalar case. Okay, that means we will be neglecting the higher order terms. Okay, that means we have neglected the higher order terms and only the principal component and the second, the first order component will be your part of it. Next, to see the solution of f of x plus delta x equal to zero. We have to substitute this f of delta x plus delta x equal to 0. So set the linear approximation equal to 0. That is your fx plus Jacobian matrix plus into delta x equal to 0. So when we substitute it, we will be getting this again same, same value, the inverse of the Jacobian matrix into f of x. Then we will find out the new updated value of the x plus v plus 1. And then after this, we will substitute this delta x into this and find the solution. Iterate till we will do the iteration. We will do again the same, again, same, same process iteratively until and unless our this value f of x, more uh, absolute value of this f of x is below the tolerance value. Okay, below the tolerance value. Now let's take an example. We are having, we have to solve the x, x1 and x2 such that f of x equal to 0. And let, we are having the two functions, f1x and f2x, only the two variables. We are taking only two variables in this system right now for an example, for the sake of ease, to understand the concept. Let f of one x f one x is equal to two x one square plus x two square minus eight, and second variable is f two x is equal to x one square minus x two square plus of x one x two minus four. So first of all, what will be the symbolically Jacob, uh, Jacobian matrix? Symbolic Jacobian matrix for this, that is equal to del f one upon del x one, del f one upon del x two, del f two upon del x one, and del f two upon del x two. Okay, now we will use this Jacobian matrix to solve the multivariable problem. Now, when we substitute this value, that is your del f1 upon del x1 was coming to be what? It's coming to 4x1. Okay, and what is about the del f1 upon del x2? It is coming to be 2x2. 
similarly the del f2 upon del x1 is coming to be 2x1 plus of x2 and del f2 upon del x2 is coming to be minus 2x2 plus of x1 so when we substituted these values in this so x1 minus 2x2 2x2 4x1 2x2 2x1 plus x2 and x1 minus 2x2 then we have to find out the deviations so when we find out the deviation to find out the deviation delta x we have to we have to take the inverse of this matrix and multiply it with the function values so i have written the matlab code for this and with the iterations we will try to solve it so what is that we have taken that x1 is equal to x10 and x2 is equal to x20 therefore f1 is equal to written as 2x1 square plus x2 square minus 8 and f2 is equal to x1 square minus 2x2 square plus x1 into x2 minus 4 and the jacobian matrix is also been written in this way so x1 into x2 is equal to what x1 x2 in minus inverse of jacobian matrix into f1 into f2 so when i run this code i will be getting with the initial values of gas as equal to 1 and 1 when i substitute these initial values of x1 and x2 <coughs> and i will be getting the first value of this updated value as 2.1 and 1.1 similarly for the second iteration i will be getting this this value and this value now at each iteration we check that whether this is to see it is below the specified tolerance limit or not so to check the tolerance limit we will take this value as f of x is coming to this okay so if the tolerance limit is what 0 0.2 yes then it is done because both the values have reduced below the tolerance limit that is 0 0.2 okay so otherwise the introduction will continue okay so in this way basically we have used we have seen that both the both the both the concepts that is the newton repson method for the scalar quantity and newton repson method for the multivariable or or using the jacobian matrix okay using the jacobian matrix so written did you understand this thing yes sir hello now let's take an example we are having we have to solve the x x1 and x2 such that f of x equal to 0 and let we are having the two function f1x and f2x only the two variables we are taking only two variables in this system right now for an example for the sake of ease to understand the concept let f of f1x, f1x is equal to 2x1 square plus x2 square minus 8 and second variable is f2x is equal to x1 square minus x2 square plus of x1 x2 minus 4. So first of all, what will be the symbolically Jacob, uh, Jacobian matrix, symbolic Jacobian matrix for this? That is equal to del f1 upon del x1, del f1 upon del x2, del f2 upon del x1 and del f2 upon del x2. Okay. Now we will use this Jacobian matrix to solve the multivariable problem. Now when we substitute this value, that is your del f1 upon del x1 was coming to be what? It's coming to 4x1. Okay. And what is about the del f1 upon del x2? It is coming to be 2x2. Similarly, the del f2 upon del x1 is coming to be 2x1 plus of x2. And del f2 upon del x2 is coming to be minus 2x2 plus of x1. So when we substituted these values in this, so x1 minus 2x2, 2x2, 4x1, 2x2, 2x1 plus x2, and x1 minus 2x2. Then we have to find out the deviations. So when we find out the deviation, to find out the deviation delta x, 
we have to we have to take the inverse of this matrix and multiply it with the function values so i have written the matlab code for this and with the iterations we will try to solve it so what is the, we have taken that x1 is equal to x10 and x2 is equal to x20 therefore f1 is equal to written as 2x1 square plus x2 square minus 8 and f2 is equal to x1 square minus 2x2 square plus x1 into x2 minus 4 and the jacobian matrix is also been written in this way so x1 into x2 is equal to what x1 x2 in minus inverse of jacobian matrix into f1 into f2 so when i run this code i will be getting with the initial values of gas as equal to 1 and 1 when i substitute these initial values of x1 and x2 <coughs> And I will be getting the first value of this updated value as 2.1 and 1.1. Similarly, for the second iteration, I will be getting this, this value and this value. Now, at each iteration, we check that whether this is, to see, it is below the specified tolerance limit or not. So, to check the tolerance limit, we will take this value as f of x is coming to this. Okay. So, if the tolerance limit is what? 0 0.2. Yes, then it is done because both the values have reduced below the tolerance limit that is 0 0.2. Okay. So, otherwise the introduction will continue. Okay. So, in this way, basically we have used, we have seen that both the, both the, both the concepts, that is the newton Raphson method for the scalar quantity and newton Raphson method for the multivariable or, or using the Jacobian matrix. Okay, using the Jacobian matrix. So, Nitin, did you understand this thing? Yes, sir. Hello. Data for the line reactance is been given to you that from the table we can calculate it that XL is coming to be how much? 2.02 into 10 to the power minus 3 frequency log of 1 upon GMR plus 2.02 into 10 to the power minus 3 frequency log of tm now these terms f are used from the tables that are depending on the conductor type what kind of a conductor it is whether what is a what whether it's a flicker whether it's some other kind of category but assuming a one foot spacing is mandatory for all Now this term, second term, is independent of the conductor, but with the spacing of dm in the field. But with the spacing in the dm in the field is being given. Similarly, if you would like to calculate the reactance, reactive capacitance for the line, where that is the phase to neutral capacitance, then we will be using the same f frequency yeah, term yeah. from yeah, yeah. same frequency term from the table which I have been shown to you. This is the table. Look at this. Look at this one second. So this DMR is been utilized from this one. Is used from this one. That is, if we are using the flicker conductor code, then we have to use this 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 one GMR. If we are using the parakeet conductor code, then we have to use the CMR. That means this is a CMR is consistently changing with respect to the codes to the size to the size per miles standing aluminium L per strand. Now
now this has been given to you and you can see that the inductance associated for the flicker is the same with this corresponding gmr and the capacitance for this corresponding gmr will be utilized so it is not always necessary to calculate the gmr and calculate the gmr and then you will be finding the through the radius measuring the radius of the conductor no it is already provided by the manufacturer and you can directly use this type of gmr and all now let's take an example for the do conductor now the gmr for the do conductor is given to you as 0.0313 pp and the outside diameter is been given to you that is 0.07725 and the radius will be equal to 0.03863 now assuming one foot spacing of 60 hertz the xa that is the reactance for uh, a can be calculated there in the the inductance for the phase a can be calculated at 2 pi epsilon ln t by 2 pi epsilon sorry it is equal to 2 pi f into 2 to the power minus 7 into f into f log of 1 pi r One by R dash. So R dash will be calculated by how R into 0.7738. It is coming to be 0.420 ohm per mile, which matches the table. This ohm, this do conductor is being used. We are using this GMR. Okay. And the inductance was coming to the inductive reactance was coming to be 0.420, which we have calculated as well. Okay. Similarly, the capacitance can also be calculated. And it is coming to be 9.65 into 10 to the power 4 ohms. Now the additional transmission topics are: we have the multi-circuit lines and we have the cables in our system. What are the multi-circuit lines? What are the multi-circuit lines? Multi-lines often share a common transmission right of way. This does cause So this just calls the mutual inductance and capacitance, but it is often ignored in the system analysis. The effect of cables that there are about three thousand three hundred three thousand miles of underground DC cables in the United States, as well as more than in the India. The so cables are primarily used in the urban areas. ground wires are used where the transmission lines are used to protect it from lightning strikes with a ground wire this topmost wire helps to attenuate the transient voltages for currents or currents that arise during the lightning strike so the ground wire is typically placed on the top of the each pole okay which directly is been provided to protect the transmission line from the lightning strikes So when the lightning strikes uh, strikes it, it will directly hit the ground wire only, rather than on the transmission line, other conductors of the transmission line, and the, it will do it connected bypass to the ground. So this has to be provided, and the corona discharge, the due to the high electric fields around the lines, the air molecules become ionized. And this causes the crackling sound, a may, and we cause the line to glow. Basically, when the high voltage transmission lines are considered, the voltage of the transmission lines are quite higher in, the, in those cases. So, due to the high voltages, what is happening? The high electric fields are produced. 
and those high electric field produces causes the air near to the conductor surface get ionized to ionize them so when the uh, when these ionized molecules air molecules surround it and these molecules and they, they hit with each other these free electrons they produces the ozone layer so this ozone layer is buzzing uh, causing the buzzing sound and also gives up blue color okay lines to blue color that's why they looks like a glow now the shunt conductors usually these shunt conductors are not ignored and a small current may flow through the containments on the insulators the dc transmissions because of the large fixed cost necessary to convert ac to dc and then back to ac the dc transmission is the only practical for several specialized applications like long distance overhead power transfer long cable power transfer providing an unsynchronous mean of joining different power systems like the eastern and the northern and the western power grids now let's discuss some of the mcqs for the session why bus or the bus incidence matrix is where b is the number of branches and n is the number of nodes what is the what will be the uh, dimension of a bus incidence matrix okay will it be bus b cross n is minus 1 okay or will it be b into 2n will it be n into b or will it be 2n into b yes tell me yes the correct answer is b into n minus 1 that is it will be the number of bus branches into the number of nodes minus 1 okay branches into node minus 1 this is your dimension okay like the rows into columns okay this will be your columns this will be your rows how many rows will be there the rows will be equal to the number of branches and it will be equal to the number of nodes now the next question the primitive network is set of individual elements of the power system the primitive network is what is it is a is it a set of individual elements of power system is it a set of coupled elements which gives information regarding the characteristics of individual elements only is it a set of uncoupled elements which gives information regarding the characteristic of individual elements only or the num of the works think about it we will be discussing it soon it is to be important noted that it could, it could not be the set of individual elements okay it cannot only be the individual elements second a set of coupled elements which gives the information regarding the characteristics of individual elements yes it may be an individual element the characteristics of individual elements but it could not be the coupled elements it could not be the coupled elements it will be the uncoupled elements so the correct answer is C, that is a set of uncoupled elements which gives the information regarding the characteristics of individual elements only and there is this is not an option i hope this is clear to you now the next question is 
the performance equation of any branch i in the impedance form will be what the performance equation of any branch i in the impedance form will be what yes think about it now we know that that v i is equal to what generally it is z i into i into i matrix okay how many times to that of the two wire dc system next question is how is the voltage and frequency controlled in automatic generation control now told you the voltage and frequency these are the two separate entities okay so how these are been controlled in automatic generation control by controlling the excitation the by controlling the turbine action turbine speed controls for voltage and excitation controls for frequency this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong so excitation control for the voltage and turbine speed for the uh, this is also wrong i think no this is also wrong none of the above. the speed control for frequency over here it must be come over here frequency okay then it is correct next is which among the following curves represent the heat rate curves yes tell me which among the following represents the heat rate curve only a only b only c the correct option is only b this is your heat rate curve which is what is a unit of transmission loss coefficients yes tell me <coughs> it is megawatt per megawatt unit less or megawatt square it is per megawatt how many what is the loss per megawatt okay that is the coefficient next is what will be the penalty factor for a unit and if the generating station is located very close to the load center penalty factor is almost equal to unit is almost equal to what it is equal to zero is it equal to unity or the penalty factor is negative or value is very high it is almost equal to unity so it is that the lambda is almost equal to 1 in this case so which among the following curves represents the incremental fuel rate curve yes tell me the answer this curve is is look at this curve it is consistently linearly increasing okay so it cannot be one next is it is increasing startingly then it is coming to the so output megawatt it cannot be uh, this like the fuel rate curve now that, that that is the fuel rate curve is like that the fuel is increasing consistently and then we are getting the output megawatt like this no the correct option is answer c this one as the fuel rate curve is increasing the output megawatt is also increasing and then after some limits it the output is not is the is limited okay next is which of the which the use of high speed circuit breakers which among the u following stability is increased yes with the use of high speed circuit breakers the transient stability is increased remember this thing which among the of these is related to the critical clearing time of the fault in the power system yes yes tell me it is your transient stability limit which among these cannot be determined from equal area criteria that is the critical clearing time and the last question is what are the common assumptions made for the equal area criteria that is all of these 
all of you okay that is your mechanical input is to be constant the speed of the machine and the transmission and neglect the line and machine resistances are neglected okay thank you so much thank you for giving uh doing this uh, section of power system stability studies and power system studies